So when the president asked his former advisor and my former colleague at Fox, KT McFarland, to write an untruthful letter to the file knowing the government would subpoena it, that's obstruction of justice. When the president asked Corey Lewandowski, his former campaign manager, to get Mueller fired, that's obstruction of justice. When the president asked his then White House counsel to get Mueller fired and then lie about it, that's obstruction of justice. When he asked Don McGahn to go back to the special counsel and change his testimony, that's obstruction of justice. When he dangled a pardon in front of Michael Cohen in order to keep Cohen from testifying against him, that's obstruction of justice. Ordering them to break federal law to save him from the consequences of his own behavior, that is immoral, that is criminal, that is defenseless, and that is condemnable. Wow, Fox News pundit Andrew Napolitano daring to speak against the official line this week, prompting this response from the President of the United States. Ever since Andrew came to my office to ask that I appoint him to the Supreme Court, and I said, no, he's been very hostile, exclamation point. Back with me, Tiffany Cross, Michael Zemaski, and Jason Johnson. So, Tiffany, you've done Fox News. You've been on Fox News. How unusual is it? How does Andrew Napolitano stay employed at that place saying truth like that? I asked my same, the same question about Shep Smith because he's another person another who, one. who frequently speaks truth at that network. The bigger question is who is listening to him in the Fox yeah. echo chamber? Do people receive it? I would argue no. There's a better home for Napolitano and many other places if he ever wants to exit because I don't think that he's penetrating that impenetrable layer of ignorance that uh, the, the Trump base, which largely comprises the Fox News audience, uh, listens to. And again, uh, the, some of the things that the other uh, mouthpieces say on the network, they're demonstrably false. I mean, a quick Google search can show you, um, you know, the, the truth of what the, the, the Mueller report stated. And so I think it's a really dangerous time to have him speaking into an empty echo chamber. That's, there's nobody there to receive the truth or the sound that he's spewing. Uh, I would wonder um, if they ever take any data or any polling among their viewers to see, like, who they like, what their Q ratings are. Q ratings, of course, as you know, yeah. are something where people uh, kind of test where you resonate with audiences I wonder where he resonates on that because I, I don't think wonder. people yeah I don't think people no. are receptive to them I'm, I'm sure his Twitter feed mentions are not anything nice I mean, <laughs> he probably just shouldn't read them yeah. just shouldn't. And, and you know so till this morning Michael on the Sunday shows Kellyanne Conway is out on the road I'm declining to, to, to use it in Sunday sound to be blunt yeah. because it's we played a little bit of it earlier and when you hear what she's saying we have this choice to make in the television side yes of whether or not we must play what she's saying because she is the spokesperson for the administration. She is out there giving their side of the story. But what she's saying is so bluntly false that we then have to decide, do we have an obligation to hear her or do we just know what we're, that, that, or would we be elevating what she's saying and simply disseminating it more? Uh, there's too much of the latter, unfortunately. And um, we, you know, we were talking about it in the previous segment. She comes on and she says, you know, it's straight out of 1984, right? It's ignorance is strength and, and uh, what were the others? Freedom is slavery. Yeah. And, We've uh, always been at war with war East Asia. Is, yeah, right, right, right. right. Uh, that's what she does. That's all she does. Now, there have been times, admirable times, when she's been directly confronted and directly called on it uh, on some cable networks. Uh, and then what happens then? Yeah. Then there's this huge hubbub on Fox right. and in the right-wing echo chamber that she's being treated she's unfairly. she's being attacked yeah, right. yes, by being right, confronted right. with the actual truth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let, let's, uh, another, but let me go to you, Jason Johns, because Lindsey Graham was also out, because it's kind of similar, right? So Lindsey Graham mm -hmm. is now a flack for Donald Trump. Like, that's what he's decided he needs to be to get reelected in South Carolina, or for whatever reason he's decided he's Donald Trump's best friend and he's out there to defend him. But this is the guy who in 1999 was an impeachment manager against Bill Clinton. So I want to play these two Lindsey Grahams, because they are really two different people. I'm not sure they've ever met. Maybe they should be introduced to one another so they can have a chat. <laughs> Let's start by playing previous Lindsey Graham. This is, there's a Democrat in the White House, Lindsey Graham, back in 1999. You don't say, we're going to commit perjury at noon, don't be late. We're going to obstruct justice at one, don't be late. He doesn't have to say, go lie for me to be a crime. You don't have to say, let's obstruct justice for, be, uh, for it to be a crime. You judge people on their conduct, not magic phrases. All right, and, and hopefully maybe the two of them are both watching so they can see each other and realize that they're twins, like that movie, Three Identical Strangers. <laughs> um, here's Lindsey Graham from today on Face the Nation. 
I think the idea that this president obstructed justice is absurd. He turned over a million documents to the special counsel. Almost everybody around him testified. I don't care what he said to Don McGahn, it's what he did. <clears throat> the president never obstructed. It doesn't matter to you that oh, the president is I mean, changing if, a version uh, of events or perhaps gonna, some would say lying. If you're going to look at every president who pops off at a staff, and you know, ask him to do something that's maybe crazy, then we won't have many presidents. And I am told uh, by my, my, my great producers that right after that interview, Jason, he went golfing this Lindsey Graham with Donald Trump. Your witness. I, you know, I, I, I love this. Donald <laughs> Trump, if there's nothing else that he knows how to do, he apparently has some magical mind power yeah. that he gets people to sort of like split in half. There's like there's like pre-Trump Kanye and post-Trump <laughs> Kanye. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, there's, Kanye. There's a pre-Lindsey Graham. Report. I don't know what magic he's got, right? So so the, the, the problem with this is that it's not just it's not just a sort of mind split, but it's that people pretend that this evidence isn't out there. Right. They pretend, unfortunately, so many news people act as if, well, you know what, Lindsey Graham? That's a well no, no, Lindsay, this is completely different than what you said before. So explain to me the difference. That's sometimes what I think we're missing in the news discussion. Not that people are saying these crazy things out of both sides of their mouth, but they're not confronted yeah. with the contradictions that they've established. That's all I want to see is a Lindsey Graham interview in which he has played 1999 Lindsey right. Graham clips yes. and then he just is forced to react. And we to haven't that. seen that. And a reminder, right. we don't even have to go back that far. Let's go to 2016 when Trump mm, Mitch right. slapped him all over TV <laughs> and gave yeah. his cell phone number out to everybody. Yeah. And so like that at every yeah. Yeah. Right? What happened to you? It's like he was sprinkled <laughs> with the Trump powder and all of a sudden it was like, I worship, <laughs> I love you, yes. I'm with you. It's embarrassing. Right. And you do wonder, <laughs> I personally truly wonder, what does Trump have on some of these people? Does he know a secret about you that you don't want him to tell? Does he know some sort of financial impropriety? Did he rope you into something? Because there is no way that a rational thinking, seeing, hearing person could go from 2016 Lindsey Graham, 1989 Lindsey Graham to today's Lindsey Graham. Well, you Graham. do if you want to get reelected in right. South Carolina, where it's going. Well, yeah. he's being challenged well, by Jamie Harrison yeah, down there, is. so we'll, we'll see we'll how see. that goes. We'll see. <laughs> uh, it's all kind of amusing, but this part of the Lindsey Graham story is not amusing. He chairs the Senate Judiciary Committee, yes. and right. he's going to use the power of that committee over this next however many months, right up as close as he can to the election, to try and discredit the FBI investigation into Trump in the first place. Yeah. People watching this show should know that next month or the following month, maybe, the report of the de uh, Department of Justice Inspector General Michael Horowitz is going to be coming out, and it's going to say whether there was improper behavior in that investigation. If there's one sentence in there that they yeah. can pluck and, and use as a justification, for hearings, endless hearings, so then there'll be four hearings. Well, there is some counterbalance. You know? yeah. I mean, he does, he, they, don't, right. they don't have subpoena power, but you do have Maisie Hirono, Kamala Harris, yes. Cory Booker on the They're judiciary. on that committee. Right. Yeah. Right. They don't but have the gavel, so it, it's hard. The yeah. thing that's, and right. Jason, just to get you back in, you know, during Watergate, those Watergate hearings that we see on TV where John Dean is giving that blockbuster testimony that ultimately right. brought, helped to bring Richard Nixon down, those were in a Senate Select Committee. That was in the United States Senate. It was yeah. not the House uh, uh, Judiciary Committee the, 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 right. where impeachment emerges. So now what you have is the possibility, and they keep telegraphing it, that what Lindsey Graham might do, uh, to, Ma to Michael Tomaski's point, is conduct hearings, what they think mm -hmm. will be blockbuster hearings to help Donald Trump's election on the investigators, dragging right. FBI people in front, dragging Jim Comey in front of the Senate. Uh, one could imagine Lindsey Graham using his power to conduct those kind of hearings or maybe just go back and get Hillary Clinton. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and here's the thing, Joy. Knowing what the Republicans are likely to do, look, Lindsey Graham got on in national television last year and defended a multiply accused potentially sexual assaulter or at least harasser, Brett Kavanaugh, right? So he clearly has no shame. It doesn't matter who he's trying to defend. But it's fascinating to me, given that Republicans very likely might try something like that next summer, why are Democrats in the House so afraid of impeachment? It, at least under those circumstances, they will be making real substantive arguments and stretching out what we know now from the Mueller report so that voters can make a choice. Democrats always act afraid. Lindsey Graham has no problem putting himself out there for this president, for his own political future, and that's a mistake. You have one side that's playing to win, and you have another side that's playing by an old set of rules that don't apply anymore. Yeah, if not appointing their own special prosecutor. I mean, there is nothing that, Repo I mean, you, you, one right. needs to use their, your lurid imagination because the Republicans are not going to be afraid to use their right. investigative powers to put on a show trial of Hillary Clinton or a show not trial of Andrew McCabe or right. a show trial of the FBI in general. That could happen while the Democrats are saying, well, 
you know, people might get mad if we <laughs> have impeachment. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm a little bit of a soft person on this question of impeachment. I, I have mixed feelings about it, but I will say this. Like, if it uh, continues to be the case that they don't answer these subpoenas and that they just won't send the tax returns and McGahn won't testify and Miller won't testify and this one won't testify and they just ignore everything the Democrats do, that's a really, really serious, that's a new bar. Yeah. That's, that's a separation of powers question. That's, uh, you know, there's a hundred and something years of precedent that says congressional investigations like this are absolutely legitimate. That's really it's the very fall of serious the stuff. It's yes. all these so called but, patriots who perpetuate this kind of ridiculous. Yeah. You are not yeah. a, a patriot when you say these are not co equal branches of government, where you actually uh, support yes. and cheer on uh, this, this type of behavior. Well, watch Vice. It's the unitary executive right. theory that is. essentially the yes. president is a king, and there are a whole lot of Republicans who believe in it. Um, yeah, watch that movie. It's really uh, extraordinary. Tiffany will be right back, and Michael Tomaski, Jason Johnson. Thank you, bye. Thank you very much. And thank coming you. up next.